Hey there, thanks for listening and welcome to the Marketing Matchmaker Podcast. If you're looking to grow your business, increase your revenue and scale your impact, all while staying true to who you are and the people you serve, this is the show for you. I'm Jennifer Tamborski, digital marketing strategist, fractional CMO, and founder of Virtual Marketing Experts. My team and I work with six and seven figure coaches, consultants, and online entrepreneurs who are tired of playing the guru game of one size fits all marketing. They're ready to create a business and marketing strategy that actually builds relationships with their ideal clients, creates massive shifts in their business and rapidly increases their revenue. As your marketing matchmaker, I'm going to help you find the perfect marketing match for you. This show will teach you how to reach your ideal client, connect with your audience, build that perfect relationship, and generate more revenue. All through a process I like to call dating your ideal client. Now let's go have some fun. Hey there, welcome back to the Marketing Matchmaker. Today's episode is going to be fun. And we are going to focus on some things that, well, may or may not hit home with you. Those are called marketing mistakes. You see, a good marketing plan can really help to launch a new business or it can grow an existing one. And common mistakes can really derail those efforts. So today I wanted to focus on the top three areas that I see coaches, consultants, and online entrepreneurs making mistakes in. Maybe these areas don't tick your mistake box and that would be fabulous. However, you just might find that one of these resonates with you. So mistake number one is what my business coach likes to call the Entrepreneur Witness Protection Program. I laughed hysterically when I first heard this term. However, it is completely true. So many business owners, especially when they're first starting out in business, end up in hiding, basically, in what the term Entrepreneur Witness Protection Program exactly emulates. Here's the reality, you may be amazing at what you do, but if you're not top of mind when your ideal client needs you, it doesn't matter. When you're in Entrepreneur Witness Protection Program, oftentimes you're hiding. And that could be from several reasons. It could just, it could be fear, plain and simple, fear of putting yourself out there fear of feedback of others, what people have to say about you, which I'm gonna tell you right now, other people's opinions of you are none of your business. Or it could be the imposter syndrome that so many of us run up against when we start our business. Are we good enough? Is, do we know enough? Is, can we help enough people? Those are very valid reasons to be in Entrepreneur Witness Protection Program. And if you allow those reasons to keep you from marketing yourself, well, here's the reality. You can't sell anything if people don't know you're here. And if you are an expert in what you do, isn't it your responsibility to let those people know that you are there to serve them, that you can help them in taking that next step in what they do. Marketing is one of the very foundations of your business. Without getting out there and marketing your business, you can't grow, you can't scale. And that really is a shame for both you and your ideal audience. Because let's be honest, 
If you are putting yourself out there and stepping out of Entrepreneur Witness Protection Program and into the light so that everybody can see who it is you are, what it is you do, and who it is you serve, imagine the number of people you can help, a number of lives you can affect. The other part of Entrepreneur and Witness Protection Program that often appears besides the fears and the imposter syndrome is inconsistent marketing. I tuck this under here, under Entrepreneur and Witness Protection Program, because oftentimes it's those fears and imposter syndrome that make inconsistent marketing a thing. We stick our head out of the sand, you know, like <laughs> those groundhogs do, pop up, see what's going on. Maybe you post, maybe you do an email blast, maybe you do a Facebook Live, maybe you hop on somebody else's podcast to tell your story, and then you go back into hiding. That inconsistent marketing is never going to get you where you want to go. You need to consistently be in front of your ideal market in order for them to be ready to hire you when they are ready to hire you. In today's world, our information streams move so fast that if you are not top of mind for your ideal clients, they are not going to be reaching out to you when they need it. There are There is a lot of noise out there especially in the online marketing platform. So consistency in your marketing helps you to cut through that noise, as well as consistency in your messaging and being able to understand your ideal target market and speak directly through to them. The last piece of Entrepreneur Witness Protection Program that I wanted to chat about today is what I like to call starting too late. This is what I see a lot happening. People have a great idea. They have a course, they have a product, they have a solution, service, a business. They have a fantastic idea. And they start working on that idea. They just put their head down, build it out, cross all the I's, dot all the T's, all of those things. And then they sell it to no one. Here's the reality to that. This is not the field of dreams. Building it does not mean they will come. I'm not Kevin Costner. Seriously doubt you are either. So the reality is, is that in order to be effective in your sales, you need to market before you're ready to sell. There's um, a really popular marketer named Jeff Walker. And he has a phrase that he says, launch before you're ready. What that really means is get out there into the public and let people know what you have, even if your product, service, or solution isn't perfect yet. That, my friends, rolls me right into the second mistake that I see quite often being made, which is validating your offer. When we get an idea for a new product, service, or solution, it's really easy to hunker down and make sure that we get every detail correct. However, what that does is keeps us from knowing whether we have an audience to sell to. So if you make sure that your product, service, or solution is what people want before you offer it to them, you are much more likely to save valuable time and money chasing an idea and be able to sell that idea once it's ready. So yes, that does mean stepping out of your comfort zone, 
to gather the information from your target audience. Because quite honestly, the only way you're going to know if this product, service, or solution is going to work for them is by asking them. You can do simple things like ask in a group, ask your email list, tell them I have this fantastic idea. What would you think about this? That does two things. One, it starts the marketing process. By telling them that you have this idea and that you're thinking about putting it together, you've actually already started that marketing process and you've started gathering the information about whether or not your ideal client wants it. And two, if you have this product server search solution that you want to beta test, you can offer it to people. And so when you're ready to, to offer it out to a cold audience, you're much more likely to get conversions because you'll have those customer testimonials, that social proof from people who've already been through your course or your program. Carving out a portion of your marketing for research will save you time and money on your marketing. So mistake number three is about your focus. What are you focusing on? I see this a lot in the, especially in the coaching community. Well, honestly, I see this a lot in marketing in general, all across the board. There is a lot of focus on the I, what my credentials are, what I do for other people, what my product or service offers and not enough focus on the you. Here's the harsh truth. Your ideal client, well, they don't really care about you. What they care about is what you can do for them. So one of the biggest mistakes you can make in your marketing is focusing, is not focusing on your customer, is focusing on you. Your marketing should always focus on your ideal client, on what their words are, on what their pain points are, on what their results will be after your product, service, or solution has been taken. This will significantly help to increase that conversion rates. Your ideal client needs to be able to connect with your message. And if your message is talking all about you, well, they're not gonna connect with that. It needs to be talking all about them. The last piece of the focusing on the wrong thing mistake is tracking your performance. Most people avoid tracking their numbers. And I know I've talked about this a lot in several episodes before, but it is so super important to know your numbers, to know your stats. I get it. You may not like numbers. They may be scary for you, or it may be a fear of looking at those numbers and not understanding them or seeing that what you thought was working isn't really working. However, when you become friends with your numbers, when you start to embrace those metrics, you are able to really look at your marketing in an overall picture and make choices based on reality rather than based on what you think is happening or should be happening. Oftentimes when people come to us, the first thing I ask them is, what are your numbers? How many things are you selling? What's your, all of those questions. And most often they don't know. Well, if you don't know where you're starting from, how can you know if it works when you get there? So being able to track your performance and really understand your numbers is critical. Now, if you're not making any of these mistakes, congrats. You are in an amazing place in your marketing. And I want to give you a high five for that. However, if you found any of these sounding familiar and you know you're making some of them, 
My advice to you is to choose to work on one. Just pick one at a time to make adjustments to your marketing. It is easier to focus on one area and get really good at that and move on to the next one than to try and edit all of these things. I have a friend who says, get one plate spinning before you move on to that next spinning plate. That will allow you to keep all of the plates spinning at the same time when you get there. If you're not exactly sure where to start, or in fact, online marketing is a huge beast that you're completely daunted by, and you'd love to get some help, I would love to hop on a call with you. Thank you for listening to the Marketing Matchmaker Podcast. If you enjoyed this episode, I would love to hear your feedback. Please head over to iTunes and leave a review so we can hear from you. And if you are a coach, consultant, or online course creator who are looking to grow your business, increase your income, and scale your impact, connect with me at yourmarketingmatchmaker.com. I look forward to hearing from you.